podcast be exceptions today we have ellen hello ellen how are you i'm doing very well thank you for having me you most welcome thank you for coming here so let's start with the introduction who is ellen and what do you do tell the tell our listeners about you okay so <clears throat> who is ellen and what do i do so um I have a, a long story. I'm 33 years old and I won't go through all 33 years of it, but basically uh, at this point, I am a coach and consultant. I'm a speaker and a trainer and I'm a podcaster. I have a podcast called Next Level University and I am someone who helps other people optimize for success, um, but also for fulfillment. And so that's the very, very short answer. If you want me to go deeper into my story, I can, but um, that's, you know, the shorter version. Yeah. As you said, you are a post- podcaster and you have a podcast, Next Level University podcast. You know, what's the main reason behind that? What's the main purpose or main goal behind starting that podcast? Um, it's actually pretty deep. So, so when I was younger, we talked often about, uh, equal opportunity, equal opportunity was like a big thing. Um, back when I was in high school and while we talk about equal opportunity, it isn't necessarily equal because there's some people out there who want to do better, but they don't have the educational resources to actually do better. And then there's other people who have all the educational resources. And quite frankly, they, they squander those opportunities because they're lazy or they don't work hard or whatever. And so what I wanted to do with Kevin was create a place online where anyone who had the desire to become better and become more valuable and become more successful would have a resource in their pocket. So now it's basically next level university. It's holistic self-improvement in terms of health, wealth, and love. How do you get 1% better per day? And basically, it's a podcast where you have self-improvement in your pocket every single day from anywhere on the planet, completely completely free. And so we are in the pocket of every listener every day because we believe in consistency and we believe in self-improvement. And so that's really what Next Level University is about is everyone's unique. It's next level you. So the next level, there's always a next level of you and we want to help you get there. That's, that's the premise. That's the uh, you know main idea of getting started at, at with the next level university podcast. And so the the way to think about this, in my opinion, is like, how can you have an extraordinary life without having an extraordinary education? And so if you have an ordinary education, a regular education, or or even a mediocre one, you're going to probably end up with a a more mediocre life. And so the way I see it is this: until you improve as an individual, your life won't improve. So everyone out there listening or viewing this, you can think to yourself like, well, if my family changes and if the economy changes and if the outside world changes, it's like your life won't actually change that much, believe it or not. But if you change who you are and if you improve, everything in your life improves around you. And that's really the premise is, you know, how do we improve by one per day? in our own unique gifts and talents and how do we find resources consistently that can help us do that? And that's what next level you is. Yeah, exactly. You know, there's um, even 1% a day can improve a a lot in a year. The compounding of the improvement or the learning is much more than any of the other thing like the compounding of money or anything else the compounding of knowledge is the most important thing a person can do i agree with that 100 percent. yeah so how and when did you get started with this podcast so five years ago uh i had a podcast called conversations change lives And Kevin, who's now my co-host, was the first guest on my show. And the idea behind that show was exactly what you just said, is the compounding of learning. And I I looked back at my life and 
I saw that what made the difference in my life was basically being in the right rooms with the right people and having deep conversations with really intelligent people, deep philosophical conversations. I went to one of the best tech schools in the world and I had extremely, extremely intelligent friends and I would always ask them deep questions and then, and then debate and, and ponder and contemplate. And so I had a Conversations Change Lives podcast where basically the listener was going to be like a fly on the wall, listening in on a deep, meaningful conversation. And then Kevin had a podcast called the Hyperconscious Podcast. Hyperconscious, if you look that up in the dictionary, basically means to be acutely aware. And so eventually uh, he had me on his show and I was his first guest. He was my first guest. And then eventually we partnered up and we started a podcast. We started basically doing episodes where it was... Conversations Change Lives meets the Hyperconscious Podcast, which is a long and terrible name. So basically, we eventually chose to just start the Hyperconscious Podcast and, and like team up. And then 400 or so episodes in, we rebranded to Next Level University. And here we are five years later. Um, we've had more listens in the last two weeks than we did the entire first two years. And uh, now we're a top 100 self-improvement podcast. We're heard in over 100 countries. It's actually pretty wild. That was a great journey. And, you know, uh, the, as you said, you had great, you had more listeners in last two weeks than first two years. So this is the main thing that we can say consistency. You are being consistent from last five years. And that is why that is the reason you uh, the last two weeks has got uh, too many listeners on your podcast. So it's all about sure. the thing you do uh, repeatedly. I agree 100% with that. I think that I'm the world's biggest believer in consistency. And um, if anyone ever wants to do this, I highly recommend it. You can put $100 into a financial calculator online. You can just Google financial calculator. You can put $100 into the financial calculator. You can add no money to it and you can grow it by 0.1%, meaning one tenth of 1% per day. And within the first year, you only have $144. Within the second year, you have $207. Within the third year, I think you have like less than $400. But if you do it for 30 years, so 365 times 30, I believe, is 10,950. And I've done this exercise, but it grows to 5.6 billion, uh, 5.6 million. I'm sorry, 5.6 million. And then if you go another 10 years, um, it grows to 217 million. And if you do another 10 years, it's, it's well into the billions. Mm -hmm. And so that's a 0.1% growth starting with just a hundred dollars, as long as you are consistent every day. Um, and I take my clients and, and the NLU team, we have a 13 person team and I take them through that exercise because I want them to understand the long-term compound effect of these small daily things that we, that we think aren't a big deal, but they stack on top of one another and they become a very, very big deal. And this is why Einstein called the law of compounding the eighth wonder of the world. Yeah, so true. That is the main thing. Like, I, I never know that there is a type of thing called financial calculator. And I'll, I'll definitely go through it after this and see how it works. That will change your thinking forever, I believe. The problem is we think linearly in an exponential universe. Mm -hmm. That's the problem, right? So, so um, there's 4.66 billion people on the internet. And, you know, if you start a business nowadays, it's a, it can be a global business on the internet. And most of our commerce is done on the internet and that's, that's not going away. That's a trend that will continue forever. And I guess my point here is that you don't want to think linearly in an exponential world. That's a huge mistake. What you want to do is think exponentially in an exponential world. Nothing in this world is really linear if you think about it, right? So a tree doesn't grow linearly. Bacteria don't grow linearly. Um, you know, uh, even something as simple as um, a podcast episode doesn't grow linearly. If we look at our listens from the last five years, it's an exponential growth curve, right? It took us, I remember when we were looking for four listens a day and we thought that was good. And that was early on, like just four listens, four different people listening. And now it's, it's thousands per day. And, it, and, you just have to understand that if we let those four listens stop us from continuing, we wouldn't get to the thousands of listens. 
And so it's an exponential growth curve. It's very important to understand that. Yeah. I believe we uh, focus on results more than our efforts. We should focus on our efforts and, you know, put more efforts into it and then care about results. I agree with that. Absolutely. I think that uh, intentions, pure intentions are really important. Conscious effort is next. And um, after that, then results are third. Mm -hmm. So I, on the NLU team, for example, I'm, I'm the CEO. So I lead the team and I coach the team and I tell the team, I care more about intentions and effort than results. The results matter. And I'm not going to pretend they don't, but if you're putting in a lot of conscious effort and the results aren't great, I'm going to be happier than if you put in no effort and the results are great. Mm -hmm. I care more about the effort. What really bothers me is when the effort and the results both aren't good. <laughs> um, that's not good. But if the effort is high, that's what I'm looking at. Because the key here, again, a lot of times it's like dialing in a lock. It takes a lot of experimenting to try to figure something out. So for example, um, on the NLU show, we have someone named Brandon on our team. Brandon is the podcast guest coordinator. So his job is to get us really big guests on our show. Mm -hmm. And for a longest, the longest time, we, he sent out hundreds of emails, hundreds of messages. It wasn't working. And we, we only got a guest here or there. Now we've gotten more guests. We've gotten more big guests to respond to us in the last month than the previous year. And the reason why is because we finally dialed in the lock. We finally got the right verbiage, the right combination, the right. Now he uses my Instagram and he does a specific DM with the right copy, the right verbiage where it really compels people to actually respond. Mm -hmm. um, and it's an authentic message. It's not a bad one. But the point I'm making is that there was a lot of effort before. And the good analogy for this is an ice cube, an ice cube sitting on this desk right now, if it's only 25 degrees Fahrenheit, if it's only 25 degrees Fahrenheit, and then we raise the temperature of the room from 25 to 26, then 26 to 27, then 27 to 28, basically the ice cube doesn't even start to melt until 32. But as soon as 32 hits, all of a sudden, it was all the effort prior that made it start to melt. That's when you actually start to see results. And so I think that's a good analogy for people to understand. Yeah, that was a good example to understand this thing. Yeah. So as, as you said, the past few years have changed a lot. So it may have changed in your productivity also. No, how did oh, yeah. the last past, uh, the past few years has changed in your productivity? So um, it's actually gotten infinitely better. So not infinitely, but it's gotten marginally better. So five years ago, um, I thought that's productive. And I think that comparison to a statistical norm at, of a, of a, you know, 27 year old, I would say I was, but compared to now, I mean, it's not even close. So I have probably nine different meetings today. Um, three with the team. I have two other podcasts. I have two podcasts we're recording for our episode. I have a meeting with my chief, chief operations officer. Um, and what I'm capable of in one day now is far more than what I was capable of back then. Um, so the good analogy here is like the gym. When you are brand new to weight training and you go to the gym, you can only lift the 10 pound weights, mm -hmm. but eventually you can lift the 12s and then eventually you can lift the 17s and then eventually it's the 20 and then eventually it's the 25s, 30s. And eventually your new worst is better than your old best. I'm going to say that again. Eventually your new worst is better than your old best. So for example, let's say I'm feeling really frail and weak at the gym and I'm bench pressing the, the 60 pound dumbbells, which for me is very light. That new worst is better than my very best four years ago mm -hmm. because I've been improving and getting a little bit stronger each day over time. So that's the real cheat code, the real secret, not the book, the secret, but the real secret is small, incremental, consistent improvement in your genius zone each day. And so when it comes to my productivity, 
I've just gotten a little bit more productive each day. And of course I've had bad days and good days and bad days and good days, but the trend line is up. So if you were to see my productivity on a graph and we actually have something called total productive output, we do peak performance tracking. So everyone on the NLU team, all of my 18 clients, everyone has something called peak performance tracking. If you're interested, let me know. We have a tracker that we send out to people. It's just a habit tracker. It's simple. And basically it's a daily dozen. So you have four habits under health, four habits under wealth, four habits under love, and it's a daily dozen and it calculates your percentage. And so, you know, let's say you had an 80% day. That's a really good day. Let's say you had a 40% day. That's a, probably not that great of a day. And then we have a 1% improvement column where it's basically you write one note, one sentence per day of a 1% improvement per day where it's like, okay, so um, get more quality rest and relaxation at the end of the night so that you can recharge for the next day. That's one example of a 1% improvement that I just did earlier today. So I wake up in the morning, I update my peak performance tracker from the previous day and I've gotten, not only am I improving in my own abilities to execute against this, but I'm also improving the system because my habits get better. I improve the system and the habits as I improve. Um, and so to answer your original question, I'm far more productive now than I ever have been, but not as productive as I intend to be at 34 years old, 35 years old, 36 years old. It's a, it's a compound effect. Yeah. I like the thing that you, uh, told your, now worst is better than your old best that the thing is really like it is true it's the fact that now you are better obviously better than the old best i appreciate that yeah it's a it's a very important concept to understand if everyone out there focuses on getting a little bit better each day you'll wake up two, three, four, five years down the road, like, holy crap. Like you'll be unrecognizable. Um, we're 800 episodes in and when we listen to the first 50 episodes, oh, it's, it's absolutely brutal. It's painful. It's so challenging because we've gotten so much better. And it's like, wow, we used to be pretty bad in comparison, in comparison. The learning, uh, as you said, it was not would be like a uh, very difficult to recognize yourself that this was me at first and now this is me so this this re- this is really the fact even i am like uh, these last two th- two three years have changed me too so whenever i look back and see that uh, see the old version of me i didn't recognize it like is this me <laughs> It's wild. It's awesome. It means you're growing. Yeah. It means you're improving. So, uh, as, as you said that you follow, a you know, tracker and, you know, you put your percentages and, you know, you know, know something. And sometimes there are the, the days that we procrastinate or, you know, laziness is there in some days, you know, how do you overcome that thing? How do you overcome procrastination? Well, I think one of the things, um, <clears throat> and that's been the theme of this episode, one of the ways I overcome it is just a deeper understanding of the downside. <clears throat> so I say this to my clients whenever I take them through that financial calculator exercise. If people understood how much they're leaving on the table by not being consistent, they would be far more consistent. And so how do I overcome the lazy days or the tough days or the days when I don't want to get up or I don't want to podcast or I don't want to do what I do? And I'll use our podcast as an example. So Kevin and I just passed 800 episodes and we've never missed and we never, and we never will. Now, doing seven episodes a week is nothing short of absolutely brutal. <clears throat> okay. It's really, really, really challenging to do that. <clears throat> and they're not just episodes for the sake of episodes, they're actually really high quality, well thought out, well intentioned episodes. That does not mean I want to podcast every day. That does not mean that I always am hyped to do it. But when I don't want to do it, when I am struggling, when I am down, how I show up is just a deeper understanding of the downside of being inconsistent. I calculated out our current listeners, uh, listens, and I calculated, Kevin and I did this, We calculated how much listens we'll have in one year, 
two years, five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. And it gets very, very big. So if we can stay on our current trajectory, our current, um, we have a spreadsheet that uh, shows the daily growth rate. And we have a conditional formatting where it shows the red for anything lower than 0.1%. And it's green for anything above 0.1%. And I showed Kevin that if we can stay consistent for the next 30 years, in terms of a 0.1% growth rate, we'll have 25 billion listens. And so basically, how do I overcome laziness? I just understand the downside of inconsistency at a deeper level than people who don't. And, and the truth of the matter is, is that doing magnificent, amazing, extraordinary things are just sheerly painful and, and they're challenging, but that's also where all the growth is. And so whether it's Tony Robbins or Oprah Winfrey or Steve Jobs or Elon Musk or, or whoever, whoever, you know, Meryl Streep or Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift, I was at a concert of hers um, in Foxborough Stadium and there was 60,000 people. And she said, you know, people see that I sold out the stadium and they think that's awesome. But what they don't see is the 14 years of consistently performing, 14 years straight, never missing, consistently performing. It's consistency that compounds. And again, that's kind of the theme of this episode. Um, and so how do I overcome laziness? A deeper understanding of the downside of being lazy. If people understood how much they were leaving on the table by taking that day off or taking that, not doing that workout, not reading that book, not showing up to that podcast or whatever, they would be more consistent. And I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect by any means. Um, but I do think that, and this is what I say to my clients, I say this the billionaires and millionaires of the, of the world, some of them I've met, they are not better than you or smarter than you. They have been more consistent in their genius zone for a longer period of time than you. That's it. That's the main difference. So Leonardo DiCaprio, he's been an actor since he was a little kid. He's been acting for 40 years. Of course, he's an extraordinary actor. He's been doing it for 40 years, right? And you're going to pay Leonardo DiCaprio $10 million to make a movie. You're not going to pay him $10 million to cook food or to fix your car. Why? Because he doesn't do that. That's not his thing. So find your thing, find your lane, master it every day and, and stay with it for the long run. And, and you'll be, you'll be extraordinarily, um, for that. Yeah. And finding that one thing, do whatever, try new things, find that one thing that you love or you want to do and go on, master the skill, improve that. And you will be on the top 1% of that uh, industry or, or of that thing. That's the, 100%. Yeah, that, that's the thing. So uh, as, uh, as you said that nobody is perfect, like no, neither you, neither me, or neither anybody, uh, not anybody else. So sometimes that happens, especially nowadays, mm -hmm. we had a lot of distraction around us, whether it's social media, whether it's people around us, whether anything, you know, we have a lot of a distraction around us. How can one stay away from the distraction and focus on actual thing yeah so um i think that eliminating distractions is really critical nowadays um there's there's hundreds of thousands of different games that i can play on my phone mm -hmm. there's more apps than i can count um you have to eliminate them proactively you you're, you can't use willpower so for example if here's an example um i love oreos if I have the Oreos out in the open, I'll end up eating Oreos. Okay. If I put them in a cupboard that I have to go grab, I'm much less likely to eat them. If I don't even buy them now, I know I won't eat them because they're not available. So if you want to eliminate distractions, you have to be proactive about it. So for example, um, in my home with my girlfriend, when my door is closed, we, we, it basically, we each have an office right across the hall from one another home office. And if our doors are closed, that means it's flow time and it's no distractions. If our doors are open, that means you can come in and out. Our, we have a little dog named Tucker. He can come in and out, that kind of thing. So one of my clients um, on his peak performance tracker, his name's Cam, he had uh, do not exceed app limits. And he had Instagram, he had TikTok, and he had Snapchat on the tracker. 
And if he didn't exceed his app limits, then he gets a one. If he did exceed his app, app, um, app limits, he gets a zero because that's how the system works. One or zero. It's binary. It's like you did it or you didn't. So did not exceed app limits. Okay. Gets a one if he did. If he did, he gets a zero. On our last call, I basically told him this is a month ago. I said, why don't you just get rid of TikTok? And he's like, I said, well, do you think anything about TikTok is fulfilling you? Do you think it's improving the quality of your life? And he's like, oh, God, no. And I'm like, well, then why do you have it? He's like, I have no idea. I'm like, just delete it. Just delete it from your phone. He deleted it from his phone. The next call, which was two weeks later, he was like, oh, my God, my life is so much better. Of course it is. Of course it is. This is nothing against TikTok. My point is these apps are not going to fulfill you. No one ever scrolled on Instagram and then afterwards was like, oh, I'm so fulfilled now. No, doing deep, meaningful work in your real life is fulfilling. And so the next call, I said, okay, Snapchat's next. Delete it. And then he came back two weeks later and he's like, oh my God, my life is so much better. The point that I'm trying to make here is that you just have to eliminate distraction. If you have TikTok on your phone, you're going to use it. It's, it's designed to be addictive. Mm -hmm. Just delete these apps, delete them. And unless they're useful to you for your business or for your mission, or you're using them to help people or reach people, if they're, if they're not fulfilling for you, if they're not fulfilling a real tangible, meaningful, fulfilling need, just delete them. You're going to be better off. If you want to watch less TV, unplug the TV and put it in the closet. I promise you, you won't watch it as much. If you're playing too many video games, unplug the, the console or get rid of it or donate it or whatever. You got to take extreme measures because all of us have bad habits. And one of mine is, for example, my favorite show, House MD. I like to watch one episode a day, but I have to limit it to one episode a day, because if I don't limit it, I will end up going off the rails. I'll watch four or five episodes and then I won't be as productive and I won't be fulfilled. So you've got to find ways to discipline yourself and not distract yourself. As you said, like, you know, uh, getting it away or putting it away uh, from your area, from uh, it could be unaccessible for you. As you told the story of the person that, uh, you know, uses TikTok, Snapchat and Instagram. And the point is, neither of like any of the app is not fulfilling us rather than it is draining us, you know, draining our energy especially in the morning when you see tiktok uh, instagram or any other any other social media what even it's whatsapp even it's your checking your mails that is actually draining your energy draining your day to look at right after waking up so uh, i would i this this thing i would like to suggest that if you want to see the social media for sometime set a time and you know keep it in the evening not in the morning it's great advice great advice yeah and uh, after that when when you have done uh, these things like you know keeping a right time for social media in the evening the thing comes is planning planning and managing your time so do you plan and manage all your time? Like, uh, you know, uh, some people plan each hour of their day. Some people plan, you know, just a fixed hours for something to do and next fixed hours for some other thing to do. How do you do time management? So for me, I break my day into thirds. Great question. So um, the first third is for me. The second third is for service. And the third third is for fitness and family. So the first third, I prepare my, for my calls. I prepare for my day. I don't do any calls before 10 a.m. Um, then the second third from 10 to 7 p.m., I'm cranking and I'm service. I'm doing podcasting, speaking, coaching, and consulting. And then after 7 p.m. is for fitness and for family, which is my beautiful girlfriend, Emilia and Tucker. Um, and I go to the gym with my girlfriend and or solo, depending on whether or not we're going together. And then I have rest and relaxation in the evening with her that that's the thing like you have to divide some parts uh, in some your day in some parts and this thing i i just noticed that uh, what i do is i divide a 
and r by r step by step like what to do when to do so this is really precise planning what i do is what you do is uh, you have divide your day into three parts that's that's really great thing i'll definitely try this thing too thank you morning afternoon and evening it's very very nice the thirds and also like um when you start managing your time when you start planning it you get to learn that there is so much time with you in a day the 24 hours are too much like even if you cut out uh, 8 to 6 uh, to 8 hours for your sleep the rest of hours are too much for your productive work also spending time with yourself your family is also the important thing important thing because life is absolutely. all about the little things you go through absolutely uh there are some times when you know nothing is working out as you said the first uh, the here when the podcast just started you know when we we have imagined something else and something else has happened so working out uh, you know when there's nothing working out as we imagine so how do you manage not to give up at that point and be being consistent at that point too so um i think you just have to have a fail forward mentality you have to understand that um nothing ever goes perfectly nothing ever goes fully as planned the pre- pre- preparation isn't to make sure everything goes perfectly the preparation is to make sure that you're optimized for the highest probability of statistical success and so um prep rep reflect perfect uh prep is prepare for what you're going to do the rep is actually do the thing uh reflect is reflect on the thing and then perfect is make sure you learn you you improve for next time um and implement the changes that you need to for next time yeah that was a great advice that that really makes sense you know yeah even the daily habits thank you appreciate that yeah even the daily habits we do makes more you know makes more uh, changes in our lifestyle or in the, in in our productivity as you said you you know go to the gym so maintaining your health can increase your productivity as well like it really do it definitely does so what are the some 100%. habits or some daily habits you would like to suggest to improve productivity So uh I call it the big 5 to thrive. Okay, the first one is sleep 8 hours a night. Mm-hmm. Second one is hydrate, track your hydration. So take your body weight, multiply it by 0.6. For me, I'm 190 pounds times 0.6 is 114 ounces. So I track how much water I drink per day, so 114 ounces a day. So sleep, hydration, nutrition, training and mobility. Nutrition is make sure you're getting the right amount of calories and the right amount of micronutrients. Okay and then um training exercise daily it can be cardio or weights or some combination of both and then mobility i do um long form stretching and i do foam rolling now the if you were to do those five things once per day you would be the most productive version of yourself yeah it really makes sense like all these things and we can make habits you know uh, as i listen to t- this today i can make ha- make it happen tomorrow so i need some time to you know make habit and uh, one by one uh, and track all the habits if i am doing it or not so this this all this take takes time we need to improve ourselves but not you know pressurize ourselves to do everything at a time so step by step going through all of this will really help a lot 100%. So um if you could turn back time this is a special question okay if you could turn back time and talk to your 18 year old self what would you tell him it could be anything uh, like related to the lessons you learned or throughout your experience what it should be I would tell him so I'm writing a book called optimizing for fulfillment I would tell him that life is about what is most fulfilling. If you want to grow and improve and have the most magnificent and extraordinary life possible, 
the first thing I would say is your life won't improve until you improve. Okay. That's number one. Number two, life is about choices. Everything you say, think, do, feel, and believe is a choice. And then the third thing would be optimize for fulfillment. Fulfillment should be the goal, not pleasure. Donuts are pleasurable, but not fulfilling. Okay. Challenging workouts are not pleasurable, but very fulfilling. Make sure you're choosing things that fulfill you um, and align with that. The best teachers in the world are fulfillment and regret. What fulfills you do more of it. What you regret do less of it. Um, that's just what I would say. That's a great advice. Even uh, a lot of listeners has been, you know, amazed by listening to you as I am. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. That's very, very kind of you. <laughs> I'm glad that I could add value. Thank you so much for coming here. It was great talking to you. You as well. Thank you so much. And uh, I like how much you are um, expressing self-improvement concepts to a younger demographic. So keep that up. Um, I'm grateful to have been a part of it. Thank you so much. It means a lot to me. Thank you everyone who is listening till the end and make sure you like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow the podcast on the audio platforms as well. Thank you.